If you have watched my other videos on hieroglyphic translations and the alphabet, you should be ready to progress to some words and symbols. When you see the circle with an extended line at its base, it is the Shen, and it is the symbol for eternity. The Shen. You will see this on King Tut's pectoral. This is a symbol, setep, setep, and it means to choose, to choose. We're not certain exactly what this tool is, but it is featured in images of the opening of the mouth ritual after death. Setep, to choose. These symbols are symbols of power and authority from the pharaoh. <coughs> The shepherd's crook is called Heka. The threshing rod is called Nekaka. Together they symbolize power, strength, and fertility. The Jed pillar looks a bit like a rook in a game of chess but with little lines sticking out of it. The Jed pillar, it is the backbone of Osiris. It comes from a, a fable of Osiris being tricked by his evil brother Seth to get into a coffin where he is trapped and he floats down the Nile and lands on the shore of a foreign land and he grows inside of a tree there. And uh, Isis has to come find him inside the, this tree. And the tree that he has grown into is the Jed pillar, the backbone of Osiris. So Jedu is Osiris's home in the afterlife, in the Duat. And this is the word for Jedu. Jed, two Jed pillars, a D, the little mitten, and the quail chick, ooh, je du. If you see the symbol of a small rectangle and two angled lines joined by parallel lines, that is the symbol for ta. And that means earth, where we are, ta. In heaven, the skies, the cosmos, that is pet. And that will be represented by a small table shape and two letters, P and T, the square and the loaf of bread. Pet. You see a little head, it means tep, a top, on top of tep. Since hieroglyphs can be written for symmetry either way, look to the animal to tell you where to start reading. Because where it is looking is where you should start reading. So they all look this way, we would start here. And it would be Jeti Jeti Meju Ein Jehu Tineb of eight. So uh, words to be spoken by Jehuti Tahota. Lord of Eight. Here, let us read this cartouche for King Tut together. Neb, Lord. Ra, Kepera. Kepera was the dung beetle, the Lord of Creation. So we are saying Neb, Kepera, Ra, Setep, En, Ra. And the translation would be Creator, um, Lord Ra, Chosen One of Ra. Neb Kepera Ra, Chosen One of Ra. Here, let us read this calcite perfume vase from King Tut. Let's read it together, shall we? We have Sa Ra, Child of Ra. Amen. And ah, oh, we have his other name, Teut, T U 
Ti ach amun. Tut unch amun. Heka. Heka. I'm not sure. And then this is his other name. Neb Kepera Ra. Beautiful God. Given life forever. This is the sickle you'll see in the Book of the Dead and also in tomb inscriptions. It means Mahakeru, true of voice, justified. Mahakeru. Here, let us read these simple inscriptions. It says, D, Ankh, Jed, was given life, strength, endurance, and power, dominion. Given life, strength, and dominion. Forever like Ra. This symbol of the bee next to the sedge plant. Netsut Biti, the king of Upper and Lower Egypt. Biti, king of Upper and Lower Egypt. The symbol of upraised arms joined together at the bottom is the Ka. And it symbolizes the spirit. Ka, the spirit. This symbol is sesh, and it means writing, the writing man, the scribe. Let us read these hieroglyphs together. Jeti meju, words to be spoken by Ra. Ra purifies the offerings. For this king, Maatra, many Maatra, you, Wab, who is purified. The little jug is Henket, beer, so they're giving beer as an offering. These are the symbols for Osiris, the eye and the throne. Also a bunny rabbit. When you see a bunny rabbit and the beautiful sign, that's Uninefer. So Asar Unifer is another name for Osiris. We can read this together, can't we? Netsut Biti, the king of Upper and Lower Egypt. Um, was Maatra Seted Penra, that's Ramses II. Uh, Sara, son of Ra. Uh, Ra-Emtis, beloved of Amun, living forever. So I hope that helps you guys. We can't get through the entire language of ancient Egypt in one sitting, but I hope some of these will start to stick in your mind. And when you look at them, they're not so esoteric or enigmatic. Once you learn the language, it opens up a whole new world in appreciation to the beauty and art that is ancient Egypt. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.